What's up, everybody? This is the Digital World Podcast. Welcome to the show. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin's future. Is this Bitcoin's last great bull run? Or is it going to infinity and beyond? We're going to tackle these questions and we're going to see whether Bitcoin's future is proper, prosperous in the short term, prosperous in the long term, or neither, or a little bit of both. Now, let's get into it. Today, let's uh, go ahead and recap uh, what's going on in the market. It seems like we're starting to run up now. Bitcoin's at 53,000. Ethereum's going up. Got some Cardano. XRP looks like it's going up. Might blast off soon. Uh, let me see. Stellar. Let's see. There was another one. Theta. That's the one that I've been watching and it's been running up. Oh my word. I remember when it was at 20 cents. That's above $5. And V Chain's going up. And Terra. That, that one's been going up as well. Now, it could be that alt season is here. So uh, pack your bags and get ready. Now, Bitcoin has been successful the last 10 or so years and it was what was first created it was the first leader in the market and it has almost become a marketing tool for the crypto space however we know that its technology is very antiquated you literally can't do nothing on it um, its energy consumption is through the roof um, and we see here XRP is 57,000 times more efficient I know you've seen this before but it's a good reminder to see how much better uh, an efficiency XRP is I mean, for every 1 million transactions, XRP could power 79,000 light bulb hours. For every 1 million transactions, Bitcoin could power 4.5 billion light bulb hours. That's a vast difference. So we see that Bitcoin's energy consumption is not ideal, especially in the current climate um, change uh, that is happening throughout the world. Or, you know, politicians calling for, you know, this climate change that, that, that is occurring we need we need to fix this or else we're gonna live in a in a world that's that we don't even recognize and to give you guys a perspective of, of what kind of you know bills on climate change are being presented I pulled up here the Green New Deal that is being sponsored by uh, Ocasio Cortez and I know that uh, Bernie Sanders was also uh, a big supporter of this and I just want to go down here and look at the the main points that they're pointing out with this bill and they're saying that human activity is the dominant cause of observed climate change over the past century and you know it, th this point made me wonder a lot because uh, yeah we've become very sophisticated and, and the way in which we travel, in which we use resources and whatnot. But you have to ask yourself, have, are we polluting more now? I mean, we obviously have more people on the planet. So, you know, that, that could be a reason. But are we polluting more now than we did when, you know, we were creating locomotive train engines and, and we are uh, uh, creating energy off or hydroelectric energy and and there was or textile factories near the rivers it's a good question I, I have to look more into it but it's something that you have to wonder if if this narrative that's being played out is hurting us towards a direction we're just sheep that are being herded in a certain direction you gotta wonder because it's very prominent nowadays and a lot of people will react in certain ways. I, now, don't get me wrong. We should protect our planet and we should take care of it because we are living in it. We are stewards of this earth. Um, but sometimes you have to question some of the narratives and, and, and the direction in which politicians want to take this. And that's where I think we're, we're going to 
discover a little bit here um, in, in a little bit. Uh, the second point is a changing climate is causing sea levels to rise and increase in wildfires and various storms that threaten human life, uh, communities, and infrastructure, which we've seen um, happening over the past year or so and or past you know decade. Um, point three, global warming at or above two degrees Celsius beyond pre-industrialized levels will cause massive migration from certain regions, more than $500 trillion in lost annual economic output, wildfires that can, you know, burn at least twice as much forest area, 99% um, loss of all coral reefs on earth, and the list goes on. I encourage you guys to look at this so you can see what, what what's in this bill. Um, and, and you see, and you look at this, and you also look at Bitcoin's energy consumption, and you have to ask yourself, in the short term, can Bitcoin survive and succeed, right? And if you're looking at the current boron, you can say, well, yeah, look at it right now. And some people will be like, yeah, it's going to a million, it's going to a million, right? But you got to ask yourself. With energy consumption as it is with Bitcoin and its antiquated technology and looking at this bill, it's not passed yet, but if it passes, can we see Bitcoin being successful in the long term? Short term, sure, I could see it being successful. And there's various reasons. There's there's some reasons I'll present to you in a moment, but um, long term, I just don't see this being the case because more and more this climate change narrative is being pushed now think about it for a second then why are all these institutions and all these uh um you know companies investing into bitcoin you see the teslas the the uh, michael sailors kevin o'leary from shark tank we see all these people they're shilling bitcoin but why? If it doesn't make any sense if it has antiquated technology and its energy consumption is literally contrary to what's being pushed by politicians. Now, I want you to watch this, watch this video and, and hear what uh, George Gammon has said. He's a really good uh, macroeconomist. Um, he's self-educated and he puts a very interesting perspective as to why he thinks Bitcoin will be successful successful take a listen one thing i definitely agree with the bitcoin fanatics is there's no chance the government bans bitcoin to a certain extent <laughs> let me explain we've talked about the government and the fed the central planners building an entire economic system around asset prices so if you think about every person and entity potentially owning Bitcoin and the price going up 10% per month or whatever it's doing, this would be fantastic for all the central planners because it would bail out the government because it's bailing out the economy. So it's well, Did you hear that? Now this is his opinion, of course, but you have to wonder... When this got created, it came right after the great financial crisis. And a lot of people were wondering, well, where am I going to put Because a lot of people lost a lot. Uh, their homes, their businesses. They, there was people out in the streets. And they're wondering, well, you know, they, they had nothing. And others were wondering, well, where do I put my money if something like this ever happens again? And I think it's very timely that it came out right after that and it has had uh unrivaled success the past decade and what a time as this to have this kind of technology and this kind of marketing on this specific coin it's like the shiny object however you can't because of its technology you can't see you see it being used in, in replacement of the current uh, financial infrastructure because it's too slow and it has issues such as double spending. So you have to wonder, short term, can Bitcoin be successful? Sure. Long term, I'm not so sure. 
Now, another reason why I am skeptical is, is, is this right here. Now, this is more of a funny video, but nevertheless, it, it makes you think. And Dan Penny is, of course, hilarious. So check this out. And as I said, you know who's behind Bitcoin? Putin. It's a Ruski conspiracy to fuck up the American economy in the world. It's a long-range plan. He started seven, eight years ago. He's going to see the demise of the Western financial world while he's still the head of Russia. He's going to, live, he's going to be there long enough. And, he, and, he, and he's already hacked into the brains of all the morons. You, YouTubers. <laughs> So, I mean, you can't prove this at all, but it, it, you, you got to wonder, you know, and there's a lot of FUD, of course, but just thought I'd share that. that's interesting, you know, something to think about. Now, here's the other thing. Proof of work is susceptible to a 51% attack. And um, if that were to be the case, that could massively drop the price now we're in a current black swan crisis right now and people such as bill gates have been talking about the next crisis is going to be 10 times worse and you you think about it and you're like well how can it get any worse than what we have now well what if we had a cyber attack wouldn't that be a great opportunity to reset the system and maybe that causes a liquidity shock. And maybe you need a lender of last resort. Does that ring any bells? Listen to this interview. There will definitely be our, the next crisis. And when it happens, we'll think about the crisis in 2020. So next crisis is inevitable, according to your logic. Is it so? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely in the camp. I believe that there will be another crisis. Uh, it will be more significant. And, you know, we need to actually start preparing for that now. And, you know, if we take the example of what happened with medical equipment in the European Union, um, you know, we've been working on the European project for decades now, yet when a really significant crisis uh, took place, the channels of communication were not in place, uh, the protocols for uh, cooperation were not in place, and people looked inward uh, initially and tried to address it on their own. And, you know, with time now, it's opened back up because the different countries realize that they're not in a position to address it on their own. Even if we look at something as important as vaccine research, uh, this is gonna require a global effort uh, from the scientists, from the production of the vaccines, to the dissemination. And, you know, what we can do in cybersecurity is make sure that we don't try and rebuild after the attacks already happened, but put those uh, cooperation mechanisms in place already. We're working on this here at the World Economic Forum through our Global Cybersecurity Center. Uh, we're working with Spurbank, BI Zones, other institutions as well. So we need to actually start this cooperation and understanding early so that when the crisis does hit, that we're in a position uh, to respond effectively to it. And, you know, I would anticipate that when we do see this next crisis, it will be faster than what we've seen with COVID. Uh, the exponential growth rate will climb, uh, be much steeper. Uh, the impact will be greater. And as a result, the economic and social uh, implications will be even more significant. So I think it's really important that we don't underestimate uh, the severity of what a crisis like this the impact it could have and it's going to take us you know all all sectors of society and the economy to come together to address that this is the digital world podcast and i hope this episode has brought you some value and you just gotta wonder is this bitcoin's last successful bull run thanks for watching see you on the next episode